Sciatica can be a fairly debilitating condition. And because of that, it's important you get an accurate diagnosis early so that you can manage the condition optimally. In today's video, we are going to talk all things treatment and management. We're also going to discuss a few considerations that you may want to take into account in order to manage your sciatica better. Hey there, it's Luke from Genuine Physio, where we bring you honest, evidence-based information and education to get you guys back on the road to recovery. If you're new to the channel, then do subscribe so you don't miss any more of our content. And if you like what you see, then please do give us a thumbs up. You can find us on all of the main social media platforms, and there should be some useful links in the description below if you want to know any more about today's topic. And with all that out of the way, let's get going. The first thing you need to do if you do have sciatica is rule out anything serious or sinister. And you can do that by going through our red flag symptoms. I put a whole video together on this in a lot more detail and you can find that in the description below. One really important thing to mention when talking about sciatica is pain. Now, the reason for this is because nerve tissue is very different to muscular tendon or ligamentous tissue in that it is a lot more sensitive and because of this the pain experience tends to be significantly greater unfortunately as a society we do tend to believe that the more pain we experience the more damage there is and we will touch on that a little bit later on in the video however i do want to try and reassure you that having quite high levels of pain if there is nerve root compression or irritation can be quite a normal aspect of sciatica. In terms of prognosis, ultimately, it's very, very difficult to tell. There are many different things that will speed up your recovery and there are many different things that will slow down your recovery. However, I would try and think of sciatica as a spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, you have very mild nerve root irritation, and subsequently, you may only experience pain for a few weeks before things start to get better. And at the other end of the spectrum, you may have quite considerable nerve root compression to the point where you experience pain indefinitely. And this is only a very small percentage of people, but it is very important to also manage your expectations. Now, if I was to talk about things very generally, what tends to happen is for the first six to 12 weeks, the pain tends to be quite acute and severe. And as that nerve settles down and becomes less irritated, your pain should improve. However, it is not uncommon for people to still have some degree of symptoms 12 to 18 months after the initial injury. That said, I would expect things to be slightly better at that point than they were at the beginning. What is important that you know is that most disc herniations will repair themselves and resolve over a period of time. Now you may be wondering if you need a scan because you have sciatica. Now I've put together a video on when it is and isn't appropriate to have a scan in a bit more detail and you can find that here. However, for the purpose of today, we'll keep it short and simple. The only time you really need a scan if you have sciatica is if you have sciatica in conjunction with the red flags that we were talking about earlier, or you have an acute loss of power in your leg or your foot. The reason for this is we need to treat you and your symptoms, and ultimately scans correlate quite poorly with pain. In addition to the fact that the research tells us that people that have scans tend to recover slower and have worse outcomes than people that don't. And if you wanna know more about why, you need to watch that video. Unfortunately, despite the evidence telling us that we shouldn't be, healthcare professionals are still over imaging people with sciatica across the world and subsequently managing sciatica quite poorly. It has to be said that this happens a lot more in private healthcare systems than it does in public healthcare systems. I wonder why. A study completed not so long ago in the US to find out the biggest predictor of whether you got an x-ray or not was whether the referrer owned the machine. Hmm. Now, if you've got sciatica, how can we try and manage things better? Now, I've already mentioned that quite high levels of pain can be associated with sciatica. So the first thing we need to try and do is get your pain under control. Now, although the efficacy of neuropathic pain medication has been called into question in the recent literature, 
I would still strongly recommend having a chat with your doctor about appropriate pain relief if needed, particularly if you are struggling to do your daily activities and most definitely if you are struggling to sleep well at night. Sleep is really, really important for recovery and poor sleep is associated with greater levels of pain and also increased prognosis. You may also find it beneficial to get some heat or ice on your back. It doesn't matter which, just use whichever gives you the most relief. Bear in mind, they're both only short-term methods of pain relief, so the more you do, the more likely you are to feel that it's doing something. Getting it on three or four times a day is much more likely to help than getting it on three or four times a week. Now, I did mention earlier that pain doesn't necessarily equal tissue damage. Having a good comprehension of this can speed up your recovery because it means you're less likely to spend time resting and you're more likely to spend time moving around and doing the things you'd be doing normally. The rule of thumb is you're fine and safe to move and work into tolerable levels of pain or discomfort as long as you're not getting any 24 or 48 hour flare up on top of your baseline or current level of symptoms. What you want to try and do is avoid prolonged periods of rest because this can lead to secondary things that can also cause pain. Things like muscle weakness, tightness or spasm or joint stiffness and just general deconditioning. So the message is try and move as much as you can as your pain allows. And there is a further reason to try and keep things as normal as possible and to try and keep moving and that is your mental health. And this is something that is not discussed enough when it comes to back pain and sciatic education, particularly on YouTube. Unfortunately, we do know that either high levels of pain and or persistent pain can lead to poor mental health. It's very easy to become fed up, frustrated, low in mood, and even in some instances, depressed which is why it's so important to try and keep moving, try and keep things normal, and to try and keep doing things that you enjoy doing, and to make sure the pain doesn't make you socially isolated. And the last thing I'm going to touch on in terms of trying to manage your symptoms is exercise. Now you have the option of doing some back specific mobility or strength exercises, but also cardiovascular exercise is going to be just as effective. And what we're trying to do here is maintain your mobility and your strength, improve your confidence in your back and your movement, but also it will obviously help with the mental health side of things as well. So going for a regular walk, a gentle jog, a swim, or a cycle will all aid in your recovery. So just to recap, the first thing you need to do if you think you have a new episode of Sciatica is rule out anything serious or sinister. There are a few physical tests that you can do at home to work out if you have it, but if you aren't confident, then just go and see a healthcare professional. Nerve tissue is very sensitive, so do take some reassurance from the fact that the pain experience can be greater than that of other soft tissue injuries. And as a result, the prognosis does tend to be longer. It is only a small percentage of people that do require a scan, and in terms of management, you need to get your pain under control as soon as possible to ensure that you can go about your daily routine as your pain allows and think about trying to do some exercise alongside it to facilitate your recovery. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I do hope you found today's video useful. If you have, then click the thumbs up button. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of our content and it does really help the channel grow. There'll be some useful links in the description below the video and come and say hi on all of the main social media platforms. But before you go, I'd love to hear from you. So drop me a comment below and let me know if you've had sciatica and the different things you did to help your symptoms. And until next time, I'll see you again very soon.